What's up guys? So in today's video, I wanted to show you my six Burgundy Goliath bird eating tarantulas. That's right, you heard me right. I have six of them. Okay, so hear me out. I really want to do an awesome breeding project with these guys. Yeah, a pair would suffice, but I scored a 3.3. So basically I have three males and three females here. Hopefully with the three males, I have at least one chance to breed a few of these and get at least one egg sac in the next year or two. But I'm really looking forward to showing you guys these gorgeous animals. They're a beautiful burgundy color and they're really awesome and rewarding tarantulas. You may notice that I'm wearing gloves and that's because this species is notorious for having pretty bad urticating hairs, which are the little hairs on their body. If you were to look at an urticating hair under a microscope, you would see that they're barbed and they have little spines all over them. So the idea is that these animals will kick the hairs off of their body into a little cloud and the predator or threat could breathe them in or they'll go into your skin and make you really itchy. So this, this species has pretty bad urticating hairs. So while I'm working around them, I like to wear gloves just to help protect me a little bit. And it makes a big difference actually. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at these gorgeous spiders. I'm going to be rehousing my buddy Brayden's. He gave it to me recently. He's not really as into teas as I am. So I'm going to be rehousing her into a proper sized enclosure for her to live in now. Probably in a molt or two, she's going to need a much larger enclosure but for now this should work just fine so let's go ahead and do that all right guys so we have the spider here this beautiful burgundy goliath female and so we're going to be first setting up the new enclosure so i just wanted to show it to you quickly the first thing we're going to do i have a new home which is basically a large tupperware container Three holes in the top for ventilation through the lid and then very important for this species is some cross ventilation along here and now I have five other Therophosa stermies that I'm looking forward to showing you guys very soon and they're doing great in this setup like this it seems to be just enough ventilation for proper molts etc and they seem to be all thriving and doing really well and then here we also have the water dish so we're going to go ahead and take the substrate that I've prepared and this is very similar to my substrate mix if you follow my tutorial. I'll link it at the top. But basically here we have the bedding and we want to put enough in here that the animal has the opportunity to um, have a burrow if it wants to. So this is a few mixed ingredients here. Now what I actually do using a small piece of cocoa mat liner so I create a false burrow entrance like this so we take our soil tilt it up and just like that we've made a burrow for the animal now this species is very much out in the open most of the time in my experience these guys don't like to hide very much um, they're always out in the open I, and most of the time, my specimens actually uh, cover and dig up their burrows, so I can't even, <laughs> they don't even take advantage of having a burrow. They'll just uh, move all the soil and web it over and not even use it. Some of them will put their boluses in there, which is interesting. They use it almost as like a bathroom or a garbage, if you will. And for those of you who don't know, a bolus is the remaining uh, matter left over from a consumed prey item. So when your tarantula eats, whatever's left over is like a little white ball, it's digestive enzymes and webbing. Uh, so yeah, a few of them will leave the bolus there. But that's looking pretty good. And I just need a water dish. And I think we're ready to go now. So we're gonna move this lovely lady into our new enclosure. But first, this species has some pretty bad urticating hair. So I'm going to put some gloves on just to kind of help protect me a little bit. So let's go do that. All right, so I just filled the water dish up with some reverse osmosis water. And now we are going to gently try and coax this animal into her new enclosure. I'm going to do it like this, hoping that I can get her to just climb up over the top. Nope, that's not going to work. She is in a defensive posture, as you can see. So let's actually try that. She might go for it. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Nope. Okay. That's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to tilt this over, guys. So, first I'm gonna grab her dish out. I'm gently going to lift the enclosure and pop it up like that. And we're going to gently nudge her. All right. There we go. That was a bit of a dramatic entrance. But there you have it. The gorgeous Therafosa Sturmy is now in her enclosure. And yeah, that worked out pretty well considering that she didn't fall from any height. Um, she went straight into the enclosure and didn't bolt out. And we didn't get haired. So this is the new animal. She's definitely due for a nice molt. So you can see she has a very plump abdomen. He was feeding her quite a bit. And she has some kind of, you know, uh, spots on her body that are missing. Cite or some um, hair. So a nice fresh molt. And this girl's going to have a nice new paint job, for lack of a better way to put it. Awesome, guys. All right, guys. So here are all six of the Burgundy Goliath bird eaters. Let's start with this animal here. This is one of my males. So I moved him into the light, but he dug out his burrow recently. And I don't know, he's just being a goofball. But this is him. Very beautiful animal, or handsome I should say. He has a lot of growing to do. Most of my specimens I would say are about half grown. So you can get an idea looking at my hand here to see how big they are. They have a lot of growing to do, maybe half, like at most they're three quarters grown, but they still do have some decent growing to do. So I'll put him away, I'll show you the next one. Oh, someone just did some hair kicking, I don't know if you guys noticed that. We have the next one, this is one of my females. I'm gently going to coax her a bit so you guys can get a better look at it. So this female was actually, I, when I received her, I didn't notice initially, but she had, I guess, like a bad molt, you could say. Easily reversible, but if you look, some of her legs are um, disfigured when she walks. Sorry, girl. Anyway, she's back in her hide. Next molt, she should look real nice. Hopefully she'll get out of that molt easy enough with no issues. But that's one of the females. We have another beautiful female. There's her water dish. And she has her burrow in there that she really doesn't go in anymore. She webbed it up and dug an area back here. And this girl, if I'm not mistaken, is actually in pre-molt. Yeah, beautiful. Can you take a little look at you if you don't mind? I believe she's going into pre-mold. She hasn't eaten in a while. Uh, and I mean, for obvious reasons, she is pretty plump. So one thing I want to show you guys, so you understand the, this bald spot is where I guess she would have kicked off all her urticating hairs. Now, if you compare her to my non dew Colorado Velosis here, this animal is what a heavy pre-molt looks like. You see here, she, her abdomen is quite shiny. I don't know if you can see that. So her abdomen is very shiny and black. So this animal here on this female non dew Colorado Velosis, the color here is indicative of an animal that's going to molt very soon. I'm excited to show you guys this girl out of a fresh molt. But I think that this lady is also going to molt soon she's definitely looking like she's ready for one and she showed no interest in I gave her a cricket she had no interest in that cricket whatsoever but yeah so this non dew colorado velosis i was planning on showing you guys in another video but there's a sneak peek is going to molt soon so we'll put her away and I'll show you guys the next Therafosa. This 
This here is a brand new female that you would have seen the rehousing of. But she's beautiful as well, and I think she's also going to go into pre mold. I have a feeling that a lot of these T Stermies are going into pre mold right now, which is pretty cool. It's going to be exciting times to have these huge spiders molting. This is one of my other males. This guy is like really small. I've had him since October, and he literally has not eaten once since I've owned him. Which is kind of interesting. He is in like really heavy pre molt right now. Whoa! Alright, somebody's not happy. Oh, there you go, you get a tarantula threat posture. Alright, buddy, sorry. Do your thing. Hopefully, you Hopefully you might decide to molt for us soon. That'd be awesome. And then lastly, we have one more male here. And this guy is pretty awesome. Really big appetite. So we you know what we'll do. We'll actually feed him now. So you guys can see one of these guys eating and how awesome of a feeding response they have. <laughs> So guys, I hope you enjoyed the short video, just checking out the Goliath bird eaters and also seeing the rehousing of the sixth animal. I'm really looking forward to showing you guys these spiders in a feeding video with the rest of my collection. That should be coming up soon. Hope you guys have an amazing week and don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe and let me know what you guys thought about these spiders and also let me know what you'd like to see next in an upcoming video. Take care guys, see you.